Funding for the implementation of government strategic program for climate resilience has been secured. Dominica joins Venezuela in commemorating the death of liberator Simon Bolivar. And the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs has issued a statement of support for Shane Schoenford. Joining us on another edition of National Focus, I'm Pearl Fontaine. And I'm Jana Hector. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others after the break. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused. And they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Welcome back. The Dominica Social Security has once again taken seriously its corporate responsibility when it presented $37,000 in cash donations to various organizations. The recipients were recognized for having contributed towards the growth of the institution or who are prospective contributors to the Social Security Fund. The organizations receiving assistance this year included the Dominica Association of Persons with Disabilities, the Education Trust Fund, St. Jerome's Ministry of Grand Bay, the Maho Senior Citizens Home, the House of Hope, Chances, the Grotto Home for the Homeless, the Center where adolescents learn to love and serve, Calls, the Dominica Infirmary, the Northern District Home for the Aged, the National AIDS Response Program, and the Dominica Cancer Society. Executive Director of the Dominica Social Security, Janice Zajac Thomas, said the DSS over the last several years has allocated on an annual basis a percentage of its administrative budget to support the work or cause of such organizations. Whereas this year, the total amount provided as donations towards various organizations and causes is $75,000. The amounts being presented today total $47,000. We are therefore proud of this standing commitment which has, which has brought you here today as we present this year's donations to the designated organizations. The fact that these recipient organizations have been selected means that we acknowledge the work that they do on behalf of our people, and we implore them to continue persevering in their respective missions, mindful of the significant difference that they are making in the lives of those that they serve. She said throughout its existence, the Dominica Social Security has remained steadfast in the fulfillment of its mandate to provide income protection to injured persons and their dependents in times of economic hardship caused by sickness, maternity, injury, old age, disability, and death. She noted that the Dominica Social Security is also mindful of the importance of the Dominican people, hence its contribution to the causes that are aimed at promoting and safeguarding the health status of Dominican citizens. In that regard, she said, the DSS continues to make a direct financial contribution towards the work of the Dominica Cancer Society. Thomas said a separate allocation is made annually for the provision of financial assistance to contributors and their children who are critically ill and as a consequence may need to access medical attention overseas. 
These persons write directly to the institution requesting assistance to facilitate them in obtaining much needed medical care. Through this initiative, the board has allowed a number of persons to secure the medical intervention necessary to correct physical ailments and in some cases even to save lives. Wow, John, what wonderful work the Dominica Social Security is doing. I think it's rather remarkable that an organization like the Social Security mm -hmm. has enough to say, you know what, let me give to somebody else in need, especially organizations that are non-profit like those listed. I think it's impressive. Yeah, and I like that they um, have a separate allocation for the Dominica Cancer Society. That's really important because as a number of you know people, young, old, or I should say aged, are being plagued with that disease. Mm, I agree, and we look forward, as usual, to seeing more corporate citizens come on board with initiatives like these. That's right. In more news, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, at the inauguration ceremony of the new Roseau City Council last week, made suggestions for the smooth operation of the council. Led by new mayor, Her Worship Irene John, the council was advised to reconsider its means of sourcing funds. Honorable Skerritt stated that residents must be invited to make larger contributions to the council's coffers in order to have a more solid financial base. The finance minister went further to suggest that the council consider partnering with government to create a loan arrangement that will ensure sufficient funds for necessary projects in the city. Should we not discuss with the government, that is to say the city, city council, about allowing the council the ability, of course with the approval of the Minister of Finance, the authority to borrow money towards imp imp implementing certain of your projects in the city. Uh, and, and once you are able to show that you can repay it through the revenue which you generate by way of taxes, then I'm sure we'll be in a position to allow the authority to borrow uh, and to implement some of those projects so we can join hands with the state towards improving it. Because you're trying, but you need the resources to implement the projects. And the government can join forces with you with, by providing you with grants, but also you can also borrow um, from the banks um, to implement some of the projects. In related news, Honorable Skerritt has put forward a suggestion to make the role of mayor a more permanent position in order to see to completion projects undertaken by the council. When one looks at the tremendous responsibilities of the mayor of the city, I believe the time has come for us to seriously look at the office of mayor and to ask ourselves should we continue having it as a part-time position or as a full-time position? My submission would be for us to consider having the mayor of the city of Roseau as a full-time post. <laughs> and not as a part-time responsibility. Because it is not, it's the responsibility is not only about keeping the city clean. It is about relationships that you have to build outside of Dominica. It is about working with the private sector in the collection of, of dues, taxes, and rates. It is about providing guidance to many communities within the municipality. So I believe the time has come for us to seriously look at making the position of mayor uh, a full-time post with the appropriate remuneration. In more news, the registry department is issuing a call to parents who have not yet registered their children and older persons who have no documentation records to do so. Acting Registrar Ozzy Walsh told GIS News earlier this week that an unregistered citizen practically has no identity. Someone's birth certificate is the, princip is the principal document which identifies the person's citizenship. In the absence of that, someone has no identity. So think about it, um, someone being born somewhere in Dominica uh, to a father and mother and the person is not registered anywhere, uh, well at the principal registry here, then you can almost say the person is stateless. This person cannot travel, the person cannot go to the bank with any 
um, for any ID when the person becomes an adult. The registrar explained that children who are born overseas to Dominican parents must also be locally registered. A child of a Dominican parent or parents born outside of Dominica after 1978, after the constitution of 1978, is automatically a Dominican under Dominica's law and the constitution. So that child, whilst the child will carry, say, a Guadeloupe birth certificate if born there, or a St. Lucian birth certificate if born there, being of a Dominican parent or parents born after the Constitution Order of 1978, citizenship being autocom automatically vested in law on that particular child, all the child has to do, or the parent of the child has to do, is bring that foreign birth certificate to us at the registry, my secretary, and the secretary will give us um, um, guidance as to how that child foreign birth certificate can be registered with us and a registration certificate issued to that child. With the registration certificate issued, can be taken to the police to obtain a Dominican passport. This child will never be a Dominican citizen by birth. The child is born outside of Dominica, but will become a citizen as a result of that registration via registration. Registration certificates and birth certificates, he says, are both ways of documenting citizens of the island. A registration certificate is a registration certificate of a birth that occurred outside of Dominica. So you're registering a birth that occurred outside of Dominica, and on the basis of that, a registration certificate is issued to you. A birth certificate is, is a document which is issued to someone as a result of they being born in the jurisdiction, born here. On the basis of your birth there, you are automatically issued a birth certificate once the records are with us at the registry. The record comes from the Princess Margaret Hospital and 90% or more, maybe 95%, 90 to 95% of births in Dominica occur at the Princess Margaret Hospital. This information is sent to us. Right now it is sent to us manually. On a similar note, he indicated that older persons who have no birth or registration certificate can be documented by the registry department. In, in cases where you do not have any trace of documentation, um, given an example where someone was born at Kashaku of Scots Island in Dominica, never registered maybe in the late 50s or whatever, you will have to rely on documents like um, one was the person that is the person's um, um, health records available. Um, does the person have a baptismal certificate? Was the person baptized in a church here? Let's look at that record. Um, sworn affidavit statements by persons, maybe the parents of that child, if the parents are still alive, to indicate to swear that this is my child. I was born in Dominica and was never registered. In the absence of um, um, parents being alive, then closest relatives. You have to find a way to solve it because you, you want persons to come forward truthfully to say that in the absence of all available records, I swear that this person was born at Kashaku, in Scotland, somewhere in Dominica. And, and you weigh the information, you don't just accept it, you look at it, you're, and the registrar has a responsibility to really study and consider the application made based on the evidence sworn to in the affidavit. Supporting documents are always very helpful. In other news, on Tuesday, Dominica joined Venezuela in commemorating the life of one who is hailed as a great man. Honorable Alvin Bernard, Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Karin Prevo, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and several others joined Venezuelan Ambassador Hayden Pirella Sanchez and his colleagues in an official ceremony to recognize the anniversary of the death of Simon Bolivar. Simon Bolivar was a patriot, statesman, and liberator of five South American republics, including the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. He was born in Venezuela, 1783, and died on December 17, 1830. Bolivar's life was dedicated to the independence of the then Spanish colonies and the dream of Latin American unity. The ceremony was conducted by the Venezuelan embassy and held at the Simon Bolivar Monument in Goodwill. In his remarks, Ambassador Sanchez highlighted three main areas influenced by the Bolivarian Revolution. The education of the Venezuelan people, upholding the constitution of Venezuela, and the preference of dialogue over violence. He thanked Dominica for joining Venezuela in honoring the liberator of his people. I also give thanks to the people of Dominica 
por habernos aceptado. To be able to accept us. Desde hace más de 30 años que está la embajada de Venezuela en Dominica acá. Since more than 30 years since the Venezuelan embassy has been here. Y como lo he dicho muchas veces. And as I've said it many times. Nosotros no venimos a estos a estos países. We do not come to these countries. Para vigilar. To uh, see, to para, spy. Para invadirlos. To invade. Venimos a ayudar. We just come to help. Y este gran hombre, and this great man que murió un día como hoy, that died in a day like today nuestra revolución bolivariana, our Bolivarian revolution está inspirada en él. is inspired in it. Senator Alvin Bernard stated that government is pleased to show support to Venezuela on this important occasion. The government of Dominica as a friend of Venezuela is always pleased to be part of the ceremony which commemorates the parting from this life of liberator Simon Bolivar. Simon Bolivar, as we all know, has been an instrumental figure in the liberation of Latin America and Venezuela in particular. And therefore, Simon Bolivar in the history and the political life of Venezuela is held in very high esteem. Being a true friend of Venezuela, it's always an honor and a pleasure to participate in such an event. Every year, the Embassy of Venezuela lays wreaths to commemorate the death of Simon Bolivar. December 17th is recognized as a public holiday in Venezuela. Moving along, Dominica has been selected as one of six states in the region to pilot its Strategic Program for Climate Resilience, or SPCR. In a press conference on Wednesday, the Minister Responsible for the Environment, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Daru, revealed that the World Bank is on board as a development partner to implement the strategy. The initial estimation to apply the strategy is quoted as EC 94.8 million dollars with five million dollars being made immediately available to set up a project management unit to run the affairs. Government strategic program for climate resilience is a plan specific to Dominica which serves as a blueprint to deal with climate change nationally. The government of Dominica envisages this project as one that is comprehensive, holistic and integrated for climate change resilience and that is inclusive of key sectors and vulnerable groups, especially women and the indigenous Cardinago people. We anticipate a continued engagement with our development partners in support of its transition, of our transition rather, to a climate resilient development path through procedures developed for assessing economic costs and benefits for priority adaptation measures to guide decision making and national budgeting processes. We have thus broken the shackles of current trend of thoughts and actions when dealing with climate change. Honorable Daru gave a background into the process which started about two years ago with discussion with the World Bank and the Climate Investment Fund. Dominica was, um, was chosen among let me say, two, four, six other Caribbean um, regions, countries rather, and other regions, islands in the Pacific and countries in Africa and, and Asia. Now the aim of this um, PPCR was to, that each of these countries, it was of course funded by the World Bank, the aim of this PPCR was that each of these countries come up with their own strategic development plan towards climate proofing, climate resilience, building resilience against climate change. We all know the particular vulnerability that small island developing states, especially the Caribbean small seeds, face as it pertains to um, climate change. In addition to our small fragile economies, um, we know that geographically we are placed in a region, in a part of the world where we are exposed to the storms from the Atlantic on a yearly, on a yearly basis. And we all know we've seen, we've seen the results of these um, weather patterns over the years. And frighteningly, over the years, these, um, these weather events have become very erratic. We would see droughts in the normal, otherwise dry and wet season, flooding in the otherwise um, dry season. Now what this means is that um, funds that were otherwise earmarked for, for new developments, now I'm talking about substantial amounts of money, resources, now has to be redirected towards restoration and cleanup, and cleanup efforts. According to the Environment Minister, the entire plan may seem costly and unnecessary, but the issue of climate change should be top priority for small island development states, 
Like Dominica, he says that the issue is more development related than weather related. The planet is on a trajectory towards human catastrophe of a scale never seen before. The greenhouse gas emissions causing these temperature rises must peak by 2020 and be cut by 80% by the year 2050. It will be impossible to do this without a dramatic reduction in emissions from all sectors. Future generations will not forgive us if we fail to act despite knowing these facts. I'm sure all of us here can appreciate the enormous scale of ambition that Dominica's pilot program on climate resilience and its SPCR vision represents. But the world needs ambition that is on par, or may I dare say even above par, with the challenge that we face. I am confident that the implementation of this project will show the world that the people of Dominica stand ready to play our part and that the international community stands ready to do the same. There are 13 projects identified to receive attention, including interior roads, storm drains, a seismic monitoring network, and the previously mentioned spatial data management system. GIS will follow that story and bring you more information as it becomes available. And finally, this news time, the Ministry responsible for Youth Affairs and Sports has issued a statement of public support for Dominican cricketer Shane Schillingford. Schillingford's bowling action was deemed illegal, leading to his suspension from the West Indies cricket team by the International Cricket Council. Schillingford was suspended in 2010 and cleared in June the following year for the same reason. Minister Justina Charles issued a statement on Tuesday, placing on public record her ministry and government support for Schillingford. The Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports wish to place on record its solidarity with Mr. Shane Schillingford, who recently was suspended from bowling in international cricket by ICC. Um, Shane, being a man of the soil, he has made Dominica proud over the past years. Um, the minister responsible for sports, along with some, the entire nation, read with great disappointment the press release as it pertains to Shane's been, Shane being suspended from illegal, for illegal, illegal bowling action. Honorable Charles considers the situation unfortunate and a blow to West Indies cricket. She is nevertheless optimistic about Chillingford's cricket career. We stand resolute with Shane and we are confident that this too shall pass. We pray that during his remedial action, we, he will continue to comply with recommendations and following the remedial interventions, the biomechanical analysis will be favorable. And knowing him as a strong-willed and determined person, we are hoping and praying that he will emerge a much better bowler and player as he continues along his cricket career. We pray that he can continue to be the strong-willed person that he is and that he will not allow that to deter him from continuing his, his cricket career. Honorable Charles also stated that Chillingford has been a source of national pride for Dominica and will not be abandoned at this time. We pray for him, we trust that he will continue and as the minister responsible for sports and I can also say on behalf of the government we will stand at his side and give the necessary support that he requires in order to ensure that he can continue because we know Shane has worked assiduously in his cricket career and he has really made us proud. We've been proud at our own local level when he played the international match. He continued to play with West Indies cricket and he has really made us as Dominicans proud and he has made his mark as a young cricketer. So we know that Shane has the ability, he has the, he has the potential to do well and so we, we are not deterred by that and we pray that everything will work out well for Shane. We want to you say to Shane, be strong and we will stand with him in spite of to ensure that he can continue and that he will continue to make us proud. And that's the English segment of the news. Breakfast in St. Louis is up next with the Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à cette nouvelle en créole, non moins c'est McPherson saint louis Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique a tapé l'assistance de la Banque La Terre, financé le projet d'infrastructure qui a posé un risque tout un pays là, ça a créé Climate Resilience SPCR. Parole celle-là, sortie au ministre de l'Environnement, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Darrow, 
Quand on confond les médias, c'est bien. Dominique et l'Est, en um, Caraïbe, là, c'est pour en um, Eastern Caribbean, là. Um, nous no pauvres, l'économie nous économie no petit et ben tous les années nous nous exposé um, à ces hurricanes um, hurricane season hurricane hot hot atlantic so ça ça a fait ça ça a ça ça a dit c'est um, toute année chaque année là 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 ces hurricanes et ben c'est mauvais c'est cool tant ça l'a passé nous ne pour dépenser l'argent qui nous tenait pour faire travail neuf développement neuf nous ne pour nous nous ne pour actuellement dépenser pour faire pour 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 nettoyer pour 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 manger ça ça c'est ça c'est ça c'est um, ça c'est hurricane et c'est cool temps ça um, damager so hodi hodi c'est un social bon moment pour nous parce que nous calons ça nous calculer un um, lot phase en PPCR um, nous ni un package presque à 100 millions ici dollars am um, qui cabinet approve et avec qui World Bank là approve pour 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 essayer pour adresser ces under ces concerns là et ben qu'on parle rapporter ça avant moi moi aussi content que que nous nous que nous essayer pour 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 um, pour adresser problème problème na dibic adresser ce cliff là on a nouvelle dominique qui va vivre l'autre pays qui a tapé opportunité faire contribution sécurité sociale dominique si l'on mise institution ça là mettre en place parole ça là sur le directeur Johnny Jean-Jacques Thomas mon qui était grand travail dominique qui va aller l'autre pays à dans on année après au stop Um, travail ici, il y a ça demandé pour y venir volontary contributors. Mais nous tenons une situ situation là, autant de monde, um, um, non est là, tout coûte pour y puis y a non est là, y a aussi le poco set là, c'est pour y ça payer social security. So, non est là qu'à venir là, nous caler, faire plus aisé pour ces mondes ça là. Depuis où sont dominicains, ils vont qu'à qu'à rester en dans l'autre pays ou ça apply pour ou ça contribue tout Dominique Social Security. So, uh, nan est là, vini là, nan est prochain, ça qui est pour place, nous ka espéré pour regulations la approve. Mais nous ka gade pour ça. Et qui est des Dominicien qui ka rester l'autre pays, ni on met la vie à, à priori tweet. Espèce mon qui ka vivre Dominique. Um, pour yon pas pour an dépend à si gouvernement um, pour point point garder côté yo yo que ça espérer que chez votre social security même comme monde qui était ouais à dormir qu'à travail tout ça là à la nouvelle Dominique Bonché et puis Venezuela mardi semaine cela pour commémorer la vie et puis l'homme en héros au Venezuela Simon Bolivar et en grand cérémonie prend place à l'occasion Miwai Bolivar en Goodwill qui était attendu par plusieurs officiers Dominique Venezuela en parmi d'autres Bolivar fait en 1700 83 et puis il mort en 1830. Bolivar travaille autant web pour te libérer Venezuela et puis d'autres pays latin américains en esclavage pays Spain. Selon l'ambassadeur de Venezuela pour Dominique, His Excellency Hidden Pirella Sanchez, qui a adressé cette cérémonie-là, il fait parole que la révolution Venezuela libérée peuple et puis éducation, constitution là et puis moins violence. Ambassadeur Sanchez aussi, oui, mais c'est Dominique. Pour célébrer et puis Venezuela, occasion historique cela. Ministère l'État, Honorable Senator Alvin Bernard, fait parole que Dominique te bien plaisir, bon chez et puis Venezuela, pour grand célébration cela. Finalement, groupe culturel pays bouge bien satisfait achievement yo en trente l'année depuis yo qu'a existé. Parole cela sur le président groupe cela, Mademoiselle Rosalind Paul, quand yo qu'a célébré trente anniversaire yo. Enchanté nous, nous avons fait nous certains nous éduquer mon à ces issues qui ont affecté société. Nous avons aussi fait research, nous avons documenté um, bagages qui ont affecté la vie, nous avons promoté culture pas mais seulement Dominique mais d'autres pays aussi. Um, nous avons changé nous en Guadeloupe et ben nous avons nous avons qui passe nous avons costume nous et ben nous avons un grand spectacle. Et là, on voit nous en costume, nous, nous avons qui venu voir ça qui était fait parce que nous avons dans l'autre place. Et quand nous avons passé, nous dit nous si nous ça fait un petit spectacle. Et l'autre jour, nous avons un newspaper qui a un plus grand spectacle qui a été vu culturel. Nous avons mené un message là, culturel là, nous avons ambassade aussi. Mesdames, mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fousse Saint-Louis. Qu'est-ce que tout le monde en bon saison Noël? Au revoir.
Coming up next in your tip of the day, why you need to constantly learn new skills. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Many people think that once they get the job they want and they know how to do it, they don't have to worry about learning anything new. However, this is not the best course of action and it can lead to further problems down the line. This is why you should be constantly learning new things even if you're not job hunting. Every job seems new and exciting when you first begin, but after a while, once you have learned everything there is to know and you have become proficient at it, you will start becoming disillusioned. Boredom can very easily set in when you're used to doing the same thing every day. This is why it makes sense to learn new things on a regular basis. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Pearl Fontaine. Thank you for watching.